Hi, everyone. Well, welcome for the first time, or welcome back. How was it? Great, great. Well, um, as Elizabeth and Bill said, this is a pilot for us. We've not done this before, so we're really appreciative of our grantees' efforts and all of you uh, doing this tonight. And then also, we hope you'll provide us feedback. We'll send an email tomorrow and just shoot a quick note back um, about what you thought worked. And if we were to do version two at some point, what that might look like, we'd really appreciate that. Um, to me, what was really wonderful was to see the creativity and the collective brain power that's in this room tapped here tonight in service of the success of our truly amazing grantees. Um, as, um, in case you're wondering who I am, I'm Jen Rattay. I have the honor of serving <laughs> as, as the executive director of the SB2 community here. Um, and again, just please rejoin me now in thanking our heroic grantee leaders for sharing their time, their experiences, their challenges in a very candid way and most importantly, for the critical work that you all do each and every day to improve lives here in Silicon Valley and around the world. <laughs> Tonight's event would not be possible without the help of SV2's lead partners, many of you in the room who helped facilitate breakout sessions. Also, our super volunteers who are working and probably not even in the room, but if you see them, you can thank them. And then again, our generous sponsors, Stanford PAX, New Resource Bank, Legacy Venture, the Social Impact Collective at Berkeley Haas, and the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. We are now going to conclude tonight's program by celebrating and toasting a very special person who is here tonight. And this exceptional individual has the honor of receiving the 2016 Laura Ariaga Andreessen Social Impact Award. The award was created in 2010 and named for SB2's founder. Each year, the award is presented to a person who has gone really above and beyond in many aspects in, in service of SB2 and our grantees. You can find the complete list of past awardees in your program. So let me welcome now the most recent awardee, Nancy Hyman, who is someone near and dear to my heart and my time at SV2. Nancy is our former board chair, and she will introduce tonight's awardee. SV2 colors. <laughs> we need a also green. Also, living out our new brand and our color scheme. Bringing out the new brand. <laughs> we just need a green. Thank you all for being here. It is with deep honor and the greatest pleasure that I now announce the winner of the 2016 Laura Ariaga Andreessen Social Impact Award. I can think of no more deserving candidate than SP2 partner and board member Kelly Pope. Kelly has been a thoughtful, strategic, and consistent contributor to SB2. Not only has Kelly regularly participated in every SB2 program and event, she's also continually stepped up to lead across a number of areas. As a board member, Kelly serves on the Executive Committee and the Grants and Investment Review Committee. She was a key member of SB2's Strategic Planning Committee, the Board Task Force on Branding, and the Board Working Group on Impact Investing. Not only that, but Kelly led the Education Grant Round focused on collective impact and worked with the staff to consider SB2's impact measurement framework. She's now a lead partner with the grantee, The Big Lift. She's given many hours to meeting with potential partners and with existing partners to understand the experience we have at SB2. SB2 is so much stronger as a result of her significant contributions. With a calm and understated style, Kelly makes things happen. Partners and grantees simply love working with her. Among her many talents, we admire Kelly's wonderful ability to synthesize ideas and move a group forward in a constructive and positive way. She can be forceful without ruffling feathers, and always imbues discussions with an optimistic and inclusive quality. 
She displays excellent judgment about people and organizations. Other SB2 leaders, including Jen Rite, regularly turn to Kelly for advice in so many challenging situations. We asked, what would Kelly say about this? What does she think about this? <laughs> Kelly's thoughtful leadership and powerful collaborative abilities are valued by all who work with her. Three years ago, Kelly was a co-leader in the education grant round that in an SB2 first focused on collective impact investment. Bringing unity to the different partner opinions and voices is a challenge in any grant round. But the fact that collective impact was both a new approach to social change and a completely different kind of grant investment for SB2 significantly added to the complexity. Kelly helped to shape an experience that opened up partner learning and at the same time supported a clear path to a decision, all within the normal grant round time frame. As a facilitator, Kelly continually helped the group explore options and make timely decisions. In SB2's work in education across multiple grant and impact investing rounds, Kelly has been a tremendous contributor, leveraging her deep expertise in education to help SB2 choose innovative grantees and have impact in this sector. She's a knowledgeable and devoted philanthropist who's making SB2 and the world a better place. So let's raise a glass to the 2016 Social Impact Award winner, Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I, I don't even know where to start. <clears throat> Thank you, Nancy. I'm extremely overwhelmed, <clears throat> my voice, and humbled by this amazing honor. Um, I know it's, it's amazing to be in the company of so many wonderful previous awardees like Nancy. Last year, as Jen mentioned, and also Mark is here, and there's maybe others in the audience that I haven't seen. Um, and I'm keenly aware of how many equally um, equally deserving SV2 partners are sitting right here in this audience. People that are partners that are so devoted and spend so much time, energy, and true passion to make the world a better place. Each one of you, staff, fellow um, grantee, or fellow SB2 partners and grantees alike, you, I learned so much from each of you, and it's a joy to work with you all. So I want to give special thanks to a couple people tonight. First, Jen Rite, who you've met. Um, Jen, you have challenged us all as you've led us through new, exciting, and uncharted territory. You really inspire and bring out the best in all those around you. So I think your staff, the grantees, and all of the SV2 partnership have really benefited from your thoughtful and always amazing leadership. So thank you. <clears throat> I also want to thank Bill Brunel, SV2 board chair. Bill, is there a leadership role at this organization that you haven't taken on yet? <laughs> you, you're a great role model for us all and a great representative for SV2. And we really appreciate your sage leadership and your commitment to the organization. So thank you very much. <clears throat> and lastly, just a quick shout out of thanks to my husband, David. Um, <clears throat> Despite, despite his deep German ancestry, somehow he thinks he's half Italian. I'm not sure how, but I somehow coaxed him back home from a six-week trip to Italy just to be with me here tonight. So, grazie, grazie, mi amore. Okay, I don't know how many of you know this, but I am fascinated with the future. For me, it's all about curiosity, imagination, expanding the human experience, and improving the human condition. I have such a vivid memory at age two, <laughs> which is probably where my love for the future took hold. I was in the doctor's office with my dad waiting for my sister to be born, and with the help of an old-fashioned globe just like this one, I proceeded to tell anybody who listened how an American astronaut was going to take off from the tip of Florida circle the globe three times in a spaceship, and land somewhere safely in the Atlantic Ocean. 
Now granted, this was only six months in my future, but for a little girl at age two, that was a, that was a quarter of her lifetime at the time. The future is probably also why I accepted an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy right out of high school. If I could be one of the first women to march up that ramp and graduate, <laughs> boy, I might have the opportunity to be an astronaut in the future. <clears throat> well, instead I graduated from UC Davis. <clears throat> but confident that in another 30 years, and in my lifetime, that three visionary space boys might come along and make space travel eminently foreseeable for all of us. We actually can now see the future of space flight, but what about the future of the social sector right here in the Silicon Valley? I'd like to imagine with you where we possibly could be in the future. There's probably nobody in this audience who wouldn't like to see long-term systemic change. Many of the issues we're all working on are, are rooted in systemic problems. Things like poverty, um, climate change, and unequal educational opportunities. I believe that systemic problems require systems change. What do I mean by systems? I mean seeing the big picture. Seeing a set of interconnected things, whether it's sectors, organizations, people, or networks. I know many of us throw up our hands when we hear the word systems. They're complicated, complex, difficult, and they have many moving parts. But, like many of our grantees here, if we have a systems mindset, and we become even more outcomes focused, I believe that we can unlock a lot of this complexity and actually simplify the problem. <clears throat> so let's imagine our own social sector moonshot. Imagine that we've all been working collectively with a systems mindset for a number of years. And granted, it will take a number of years. But imagine when all the systems in this sector work like a well-oiled machine, where everybody's pulling in the same direction, and all of our great nonprofits are aligned with evidence-based programs and where, there's, where all the interdependencies and interconnections are known and are linked together. When this happens, outcomes will be more predictable. We will know the true value of each nonprofit and therefore that will, that will bring uh, sustainable funding to them. And ultimately, we'll have a more uh, efficient sector, which means that all resources will go to directly fuel and magnify our desired outcomes. This is how we create systemic change. Now I know this sounds like a futuristic dream, but let me leave you with something that inspired me lately. It's called the Breakthrough Starshot Project. Philanthropy, philanthropist Yuri Milner, along with Stephen Hawking, have this vision to make interstellar, interstellar space travel possible within a single generation. Interstellar, between stars. The closest star to our own sun is 4.4 light years away, which is 25 trillion miles. At our current rate of space travel, it would take us 30,000 years to get there. <laughs> but Yuri's plan is to coordinate and accelerate thousands of tiny spaceships up to 20% the speed of light, taking these little stamp-sized er, uh, nanoships only 20 years to reach Alpha Centauri, the closest star. That's pretty amazing. For sure this is a big project, and it will take more than half a lifetime. But imagine instead, instead of tiny nanoships, that we all work together, collectively, to coordinate the thousands of nonprofits here in the Silicon Valley. And yet, even with a systems mindset, that might take a long time. But it's the future. It's where imagination and, and uh, improving the human condition converge. If the Breakthrough Starshot project can happen in outer space, surely we can imagine our own Breakthrough Systems project right here on Earth, right here in the Silicon Valley. Thank you all so much. Oh.